find a newspaper this morning. It says 47,000 um, Veronica buckets set in the face uh, and face marks from government to churches, mosques and uh, palaces. ICOMS rakes in 177.3 million Ghana cities at Tema Port in one week. Better roads, not an instrument of death, President Kufadu. And agri cattle lakeside estate wins land case against Ni Ajete Obo, uh, Bo, the second of uh, Teshin. The Daily Guide, sorry about that, my, my, my mask is uh, misbehaving. Daily Guide, venture capital case. NDC CEO to refund um, 15 million Ghana cities. Sanglemi housing fraud details out. NLA licenses uh, five actors. And huge cannabis seized. Government breaks telcos monopoly. The Ghanaian Times. NIA distributes 3 million cards from today at 5,635 registration centers nationwide. It's been postponed to Wednesday uh, for a pair a letter issued by and signed by ACI Palm Detti, who's the PRO for the N NIA. Uh, government donates Veronica Bucket face masks to churches and mosques. An NCA poised to set price ceiling for telecommunication services. Imani identifies challenges in Tema port clearing system, but GRA denies the claim. It's been a back and forth there at the ports. The freight forwarders are not happy with ICOMS. They say they want GCNet back. Why is GCNet being kicked out? We do not know yet. NLA. VAG grants licenses to private loto operators. And the BNFT, IEA backs Bank of Ghana's 10 billion bailout decision. ICOMS rakes in over 170 million Ghana cities after takeoff at the Tema port. And I'm sure you know that sometime last week, the Minister for Trade and his deputy, the Honorable Alan Chamanting and uh, Carlos Ayengra, who used to be a freight forwarder, I don't know if he still practices, were hooted at at the Tema port. And uh, Kenal Dama tried to explain issues there, but they don't seem happy. But government says that they're raking in 170 million Ghana cities. COVID-19 speeds up introduction of cybersecurity regulations. New law expected to be passed this year. Cybersecurity authority to be established for strict compliance. The daily graphic is the final one this morning. It says Vice President launches digital payment platform. Uh, this morning, every Ghanaian must be given opportunity to vote. Al Hassan and Dani, uh, a student banker there. NIA begins distribution of cards today. And again, post retirement contract, electors can teach until they are 70. And again, on the front page of the Daily Graphic, uh, it's a very sad, sad, sad picture. I've read this danger. Take a look at it. Uh, so I don't know what it is. The flats are coming, the covet is broke, broken off, and it's, it's, not, it's not a good thing to see. And this is not. A surprise to me at all. It doesn't come as a surprise to me at all because most of the time you get a lot of these things out there. Be safe while you're out there. My guest this morning, the Honorable Kwame Agboja, he's a member of parliament for the good people of Adaklu. Around here we call him the Adaklu Messiah. He will shake his head and say no, but uh, the people love him. So we will insist and call him so. And also Eric Chum, he's a member of the MPP's communication team. And very soon, maybe you'll start calling him the member of parliament for the Fantiaqua South Constituency. Eric, welcome. Uh, uh, Council, good uh, morning. Thank Honorable. you. Welcome. Oh, thank you. Weekend. How was the weekend? Uh, well, thank you very much, uh, my brother. Good morning to mm. you, uh, yourselves. Uh, good morning to my brother. It's been a while. Mm. Yeah, uh, good morning to your church viewers, especially those from Adaklu. Mm. Uh, since Friday, mm -hmm. we've been uh, locked up in mm. uh, uh, Akosombo, uh, trying to work on uh, the mm. bill. Mm. Uh, uh, and then uh, we just came back last night. So okay. the weekend has been very uh, taken by working okay. for the state. Mm. But it's all good just to get the bill ready so that when we go back tomorrow, we'll have a smooth uh, way of taking them. I see. Great. Working for Mother Ghana. Erico, how are the grounds? Well, good morning. Good morning to uh, my friend. I haven't seen him for a while. Mm. We used to do a bit of sparring, <laughs> <laughs> uh, mostly on Metro, but yeah, I mean, yeah. he's a good friend of mine. Uh, uh, nice to see him. Good mm -hmm. morning to yourself. Thank you. And to all the people watching TV3 this morning. Mm -hmm. And of course, the good people of Antioch South. Mm -hmm. uh, good morning to them. Okay. Well, it, it must be very brief to uh, look in the, uh, the deadline of 20th. Uh, to be here, it, but you must <laughs> you, you, you must be very brave to, to, well, to skip. You went, you no, 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 I was there. You I went, just you go went back. to the school of the uh, lions. I just go back. We, we uh, grab the substance. We leave the shadow. All right. Okay. Yeah, I just go back last night. Um, 
Of course, this is also extremely important. Sure, um, sure, sure. That you get an opportunity to use platforms like this mm -hmm. to propagate the good works of the MPP administration is also mm -hmm. extremely important. And so um, when you have an opportunity mm -hmm. like this, you need to be able to balance finally mm -hmm. uh, your responsibilities. That's why I'm here. But okay. I'll wish be heading well. back as soon, uh, as. as soon as I, I can. I wish you well. Thank okay. You. We wish you well. The, the primary is set for 20th of June. Yes, it is. Um, but already we're reading and hearing threats of defection, curses, people slaughtering rams and putting it in rivers, and uh, threats of lawsuits as well because people think they have been wrongfully disqualified and all of that. Is everything okay with the MPP as we speak? <laughs> the MPP is a very huge political party. Mm -hmm. um, and it has people from different facets of society. That makes it a very uh, unique political party. Mm -hmm. uh, in processes like this, uh, you would always find that some people will be unhappy mm -hmm. um, and would express their disquiet in various ways mm -hmm. and, and forms. But then when I have conversations like these, I always go back to uh, the venerable uh, J. Kufo, former president, mm -hmm. who tells you that it's better to be uh, a messenger mm -hmm. in a ruling political mm -hmm. party in mm -hmm. terms of government than be like a general secretary of a party in opposition. Mm -hmm. And so I would implore all the various people, as um, bitter as they are, as um, uh, unhappy as they are, mm. to exercise a bit of restraint, to be circumspect, mm. and allow the processes to work. Um, because, I mean, even today, this morning, mm -hmm. the General Secretary of the party would address uh, yeah, a at, press conference. At and I'm sure that some of these people, uh, or these issues, will be put to bed. Mm. Um, it's important that we also appreciate that in every political party, I call them the mavericks. Mm. You have people who would uh, be on the peripheries every now and then, but the MPP is an extremely strong party. Mm. And I always say that it's better to be within uh, a political party like this, mm. express your views, be divergent as you want, but by all means, uh, issues to do with defections mm. and be unhappy and all that, the, it's not something that would uh, help anybody. Uh, so I believe that even at a constituency level, mm. regional level, and national level, we have systems in place to deal with some of these mm. uh, fallouts. Well, you have not told me whether all is well or all is not well. You have just told me how big the party is. All is well. I mean, the MPP was well, a political... People are threatening to defect. No, but I mean... People, are, are, people are cursing uh, here and there. It is not something that is uh, peculiar only to the new patriotic party, mm. where uh, when you go through these processes, people would express some level of disquiet. Mm. What I know as well is that um, every leader has a responsibility mm. to uh, call their people and put mm. them in check. Mm. And so some of these people are even doing it outside of the real influence of the same protagonists that mm. are supposed to have been uh, disqualified. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that um, cool heads should prevail. Mm. Uh, we have systems in place as a political party mm -hmm to deal with these processes. In any case, um, I think that the refrain is that it's actually the political party that sponsors mm -hmm. any candidate to go to parliament, mm -hmm. right? So once you're a member of the party, mm -hmm. you would have to find ways of uh, working around this. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the general health of the political party, you know mm -hmm. that we won a massive uh, endorsement from the people of this country. And if you look at the track record of President Akufuado and what we've been able to do to date, I mean, there's a very a political party, probably one of the biggest political parties in Africa. Let, let's look at the timing uh, of, of this primaries and, you know, concerns about how we heal the party after all is said and done. I mean, people who are threatening lawsuits, threatening defection, casting, they may be bitter and, and all of that because they think that some people are being protected to go back to parliament even when on the grounds they have done, they seem to have done nothing for their people. Is the timing right for you? Does it worry you? 
as a politician. No, not at all. Maybe I'm people. the wrong maybe I'm the wrong person to be asking these questions in terms of my orientation. Okay. And I have held a position that uh, the party always reigns supreme. The president mm -hmm. himself has actually said on occasion that the MPP party is bigger than himself. You know, and I think that without even digressing and spending too much time on the subject, mm -hmm. if, even if you go to the president today mm -hmm. and you ask him if he has certain challenges with certain things in the party, I'm sure you would have a few things to say. Mm -hmm. You know, so in a political party, you choose to join a political party. You go by the tenets mm -hmm. and the ideals of that particular political party. And I'm saying that for us as a political party, we have systems in place mm -hmm. to deal with some of these fallouts. I mean, this is just, uh, uh, if you like, a flash in the pan. Nothing would happen. Okay. Kwame, take, take a bite on this, if you will. Um, yes. Rich, uh, Eric says that all is well. Uh, timing is not a problem. People are threatening uh, lawsuits, defection. People are cursing, and we've seen it. But he says that, which is why we may have a press conference today um, to address some of these things. And it is better to stay as a messenger in a ruling party than rather be a general secretary of a position party like yours. What do you say? I didn't make any reference to him. But <laughs> no, I don't. Well, but, but his party is in opposition, so. <laughs> well, but you are we'll going to we'll, draw him. We'll, 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 Mr. We'll, Hughes. We'll have to tell him. I, 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 I can tell you it's true that his proximity to power mm. and my proximity to power will always make him feel better okay. than me. Okay. And I think this advice by President Kufour is an advice that everybody should take when you have access to power. Mm. It's better you iron out your differences amicably mm -hmm. than uh, do things that will send you to, uh, into opposition. Mm. Indeed, I am sure, even in NDC today, if we have our way, mm -hmm. Uh, God willing, if we are granted victory in uh, December, we'll mm. do things better. But uh, he said... 2065. Uh, allow him, allow him. <laughs> if he, uh, I, I will also say that uh, times like this always bring challenges to political parties because mm. of aggrieved uh, people, mm -hmm. people not satisfied with the, the system and other things. But I am a bit worried about the level of rollback of participatory democracy in NPP. Why? Uh, first of all, it can't all be right. Mm. When I see party offices being bent down, mm. that can be a sign of uh, it is all with us in, in a party. When you see people going to Antwa mm. or going to reverse cursing, mm. how can that be interpreted to be it is all with, uh, well with us? Surely there are things uh, wrong. I'm not saying we've never had those challenges in other parties, including mine. Mm, but mm. to the extent and the, the magnitude we are seeing currently, uh, they better watch it uh, themselves. Okay. Nobody will tell you this thing can lead you into, into opposition easily. Mm. But well, I, I said that I'm worried about the rollback of participatory democracy in, okay. uh, in MPP, simply mm. because on the 16th of October 2007, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in the past, when President Mills was uh, outdoored, mm. some people call it the uh, Swedru, uh, declaration. declaration. Right. It brought about some challenges in NDC. Mm -hmm. And then I remember the, uh, uh, the then uh, the President, uh, well, no, by that time was not President, mm -hmm. Nana Kufado suggested to NPP people that be careful, that is going towards their 2008 uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, primaries, primaries okay. that the party should do everything possible to avoid imposing candidates on the, the, the party, mm -hmm. to avoid what happened to ND NDC. Mm. So it is quite surprising that today, just because President Akufuado is the only candidate that filed, mm. the members of NPP will not even be given the opportunity to decide yes or no vote. Oh, come For on. me... But an executive <laughs> meeting. No, 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 no hold, hold on. Mm, okay. The NPP national executive can't mm. decide that they are all the members of the party. Mm. This is not the first time. We've had NDC had one candidate before. We mm. still went ahead to give opportunity to everybody to decide whether that is the candidate you want. Okay. What is Nana Kufado, uh, President Akufuado afraid of? That he will not subject himself to at least yes or no. I am sure there will be people in MPP who vote against him that he's misled, he's misled them and he, they don't want him. You that is what so? they want to avoid. That is why they don't want to, okay. to do that. Secondly, mm -hmm. the, the method of uh, uh, selecting some of their candidates are creating problems. Mm. Indeed, if you want to protect people, use methods that will be appealing to everybody. 
But it appears sometimes some people are duly qualified according to the constitution of our country. Mm. It's 18 uh, or it's 21. Mm. It's so and so. Well, but because out. somebody doesn't want him, they, they decide that you will not uh, participate. Those things are, I, I mean, come as an affront. Well, to but they all went through vetting if the committee uh, disqualifies you. Oh, that, that is what I'm saying that mm. on the surface, they can say that, yes, you've been disqualified. But that is the essence of uh, uh, the, the vetting. Mm. But if people feel aggrieved, that is when you see uh, this. In, but, for, but for me, mm. the most significant part of what NPP is doing these days is a rollback of participating democracy when only the top mm. <clears throat> decides for almost everybody and the worst one was the decision that nobody would decide the fate of Nana Kufado before he becomes their candidate. To me, it is not a democracy. Why, why, that you is the why are you crying more than the bereaved? No, no I'm saying, ah, but the constitution, the organization of political parties mm. is part of our constitution. Right. And it must be done in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a very clear mm. and open manner. And I'm saying that mm. even if you end up being the only candidate, mm. other, clue, other clue members of NPP, have to be asked whether you want Akufuado to be your, your candidate. They can say no. Why not? So, and, and I'll give you an example as well. When it came to NDC, mm -hmm. we had one candidate. We still went and asked people to decide whether they want him. Uh, want him. We are not in normal times. Where are they going to meet to, to, to do that? Where are they going to meet? Yes. How, how are they able to uh, connive with the theology of evil, which are called uh, a theology of evil, the NIA, the MPP, and then the... Let's talk about it. Let's look at the time. You know, no, Eric, you're coming. Okay. Let's look at the timing as well. Yeah. Um, Eric says there's no cause for alarm. Do, do you see alarm? Uh, the closeness, I mean, after the primaries, you would have to heal the party. And it's a process that both of you go through that people are aggrieved, all these people threatening whatever, burning down. The, the biggest threat... They would have to be brought back so that if victory... victory the biggest happen. threat I see currently is not even the, the conduct of what they are doing and the impact on their party. What they are doing would invariably spread COVID in our country. Because he needs to go and talk to the delegates. Mm. The delegates don't live in a cocoon. NDP delegates don't live in a cocoon. We live in the same communities with them. So if they go spreading COVID, it will touch everybody, including you who is not a political. So that is the biggest threat I see in terms mm. of what they are doing. Mm. That they've left their primary so close now. Mm. Unfortunately, COVID has come. They are forced to do what they are doing, though they know the risk of what they are doing. Mm. I'm sure he's more careful what he's doing now because he's going around communities, meeting people. Mm. You can't be so sure that you've taken all the, the, the necessary steps so sure. you're not going to be touched. So it is a threat to all of us. Mm. And for me... To say, that, to, to say that this is not a threat, it's a threat to the whole country in a sense that when you see a party of it being bent down, mm. the burning is not isolated. Mm. Other people could be injured. You see people demonstrating, cursing, uh, uh, things like that. I'm saying it's not good for democracy. Okay. If they were to allow the processes of broad-based participation, mm. it would have minimized the level of acrimony we see. Eric, broad-based participation... I'm sure you wanted to respond to that. You that see, everybody I, I think in the party they, was not given a they, chance it, to, to decide on President Akufuado and uh, Vice President sure, Baumia. I'm sure that this morning we would have used this opportunity to discuss more pertinent things. This is not uh, pertinent? Uh, because, you see, the, the angle that he's going is extremely preposterous. I mean, if you want to... Is it the it, angle or the, the issue the, is the, not listen, pertinent? Listen, listen, you see, the MPP is a formidable political party. Mm. And it's there for everybody. The evidence is clear for everybody to appreciate. And all these things are things that, for me, as far as I'm concerned, mm. it's just a mere aberration, right? Um, we're going to go to electoral processes internally. Mm -hmm. um, and he knows. He's been a member of parliament. He's contested in primaries before. The internal politicking sometimes is even a bit more, uh, if you like, fierce. acrimonious mm -hmm. and fierce than... Um, the MPP and the But after it's done, we all come together, galvanize our base, and move and project the president, Nana Kufuadu, for all the good works that he has done. Mm. That is the most important thing. We are not enemies within ourselves. Okay. You know? So, I mean, I'm in a primary. I mean, sometimes you even get people writing all sorts of things about yourself, mm. but then you just have to restrain yourself. You understand? Mm. So, it is not a big deal as far as I'm concerned. The most important thing is that this is a political party mm. that has its own constitution. What NEC did last week mm. is not in abeyance with our constitution at okay. all. I mean, the candidate was one sole candidate. He's been endorsed. He's been endorsed by NEC. By, by a few? No, 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 not by a few. Because nobody is contesting him. 
and that net will set a, a, a date for acclamation. That's mm. exactly what it is. So I don't understand but, but he's where he's been already issues. endorsed. Yeah, but because there's no other candidate. Okay. It's as simple as that. And that's our constitution as a political party allows that. Okay. Okay, so let's move on. The most important thing for me mm. is that there's a political party. You look at how well the president has performed. A stellar performance, even in the uh, midst of this COVID-19 situation, mm. in terms of showing conviction, leadership, clarity of thought, and how we have to proceed as a country. The things that we have done as a political party, mm. the one district, one factory, ambulances in the various constituencies, the uh, NAVCO, mm. you're talking about okay. the issues to do I, with I think that you you have set you have people. set your own campaign no, so platform. Thank you. Thank you. Having a Thank, you. Thank you very much. For me, I am proud to Thank be a you. member of the MPP. Thank you for setting your own campaign <laughs> platform. <laughs> you are happy you did NAVCO. That is, yeah, that is, yes, because that is a stellar for, achievement. For four, four, four or five years, under your watch, these graduates were sitting at home. The, the NAPCO folks said you have not paid them. Oh, this is not. Oh, so then they're here. Just, just give them, give them NAPCO. If you don't pay them, that's nothing. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk ICOMS. The new integrated customs management system, ICOMS, is said to have raked in 177.3 million Ghana cities in revenue at the Timber Port one week um, of going live. The amount was generated from successful processing of 4,793 bills of entry from customs, house agents, and freight forwarders. It must be noted that this is not the total revenue generated at the Tema port last week. This is because a large chunk of uh, BOE for goods cleared last week had been processed through the systems of outgone uh, service providers and revenues declared through that system. Customs expects, expects, customs expects to complete processing of all BOE declared through the previous system in the next two weeks. It's, uh, it's at this point that the full revenues at the Timber Port will reflect in ICOM. So, Kwame, the, the ministry is, um, is telling us that ICOMS has generated uh, some money, despite the bottlenecks that the freight forwarders have been talking about and all the concerns. My, my key concern is, what was wrong with the old system, which is why we had to trade it for, for this one, which has been fraught with a lot of difficulties at the inception stage? And last week, we saw the the minister, the deputy, the commissioner of uh, uh, GRA and uh, Colonel Damo have been hooted at, at the port. But they're telling us that there's a success story. Is it, is it a story you would like to buy? Well, Mr. Hughes, the, you asked a very important question. What is wrong with the previous system? Mm. In fact, you will notice that the previous system has been perfected so much, so well that Today, if you were to be importing a vehicle from the United States, mm -hmm. uh, once you get the vehicle and uh, sent to the port and everything, mm -hmm. you can almost accurately tell how much duty you are supposed to pay. Mm -hmm. And the two or three weeks that the vehicle will be in transit mm -hmm. uh, to get to Tema, you will be able to find the money and be ready. Mm -hmm. So you don't go to the port and be surprised by anything. We all know exactly what, what it is. What and it secures revenue for the state. Mm -hmm. Because under the previous system, you couldn't doctor anything. You couldn't go into the system and pretend that a Range Rover mm -hmm. uh, 2020 is a, a, a Maurice Minor or a, 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 a Daewoo Tico. Mm -hmm. you, you couldn't do that. So guarantee, it guaranteed revenue to the, to the state. Mm -hmm. Why are they changing it? It's simply because Tell of me. what NPP is, is doing. Uh, they, 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 they feel everything that uh, was uh, in uh, pro, uh, 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 motion uh, before they came to power, mm. they must undo it and put their own people there. But the most critical thing you need, you need to find out is this. Mm. You said that they said they've, uh, they, they are having a success. We are, told, million. we are told that within the week, mm -hmm. vehicles that should attract about 6,000 cities uh, 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 charges, mm. they were paying 14 cities in How? some cases. Because the system is it's not, they, they went manual again. They went manual. So that the hooting was not because they don't like the face of the thing. Because they've realized they are in 2020, but they've gone back to 2002 method of doing things. And if you see every, every, every time the mm. Unipass, the, uh, you, uh, the, what you are calling the ministry gets opportunity, mm -hmm. the reasons they give is just like the reasons NIA, the, how do you call it, EC gives for a new register. It's exactly like uh, that. At the end of the day, they will tell you, we'll do it anyway. Mm. Uh, whether you like it or not, we'll do it. And guess what? 
They've written certain things into that contract that Ghanaians must be aware. What? That if you were to terminate that agreement within a year, mm. you pay a whooping amount of, I think, 90 million or mm. something mm. dollars. Mm. For what? The, 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 how do you call it? The GCNA system is almost 30% uh, uh, or so ours. Mm. We own it already. Yeah, 35%. So you, you give it away for free, mm. and then you bring in somebody who you don't have a dime interest in. What they are doing now is almost wholly owned by the, the, the operator. Ghana does, we've lost our in, uh, interest. Mm. So you ask yourself, what kind of people would have 35% stake in something that is working perfectly? Mm. You've decided to give it off mm. and then bring somebody who doesn't give you anything. It's simply because maybe they think that the person who is doing it is 100% DS, mm. but the state doesn't matter. But eventually, when these things come to play, Assuming the government changes, mm. and I'm confident government can change in December mm. and then uh, 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 January, would, should we maintain the system? Knowing very well that government can change, the system may not be sustained. Mm. They've written into that clause, uh, a clause into that saying that you pay the operator $90 million. That is theft, isn't it? Hmm. Uh, that is daylight robbery. That's contractual. Well, but my, bro my brother, if you write a contract like that, it must be that you have a very malicious mind. That is why you can write a contract like that. What is wrong with GCNet system? Mm, mm. That is secured, securing revenue to the state, yet you've gone back to a system which is almost manual, mm. that vehicles cannot be appropriately evaluated, that people are busy. Eh? Mm. Clearing vehicles that they should pay 100,000 Ghana CD, they are busy clearing for 2,000, 3,000, 14 CDs. Jesus Christ, what is happening in this country? Simply because... You don't like the face of GCNet. And did, GCNet did, did, is did not... They say that? What else could be the, the reason? And I'm saying you own 35% of it. It's like those days that GPH, when government changed, mm. government was pretending that uh, MTS was this, was that, was that. Mm -hmm. You own 30% of the thing. And you are still complaining about, uh, about what you own. And that is the, the, the problem we have. So sadly, the processes at the port are not as smooth as we are told. Mm. Of course, these people are injecting a lot of money into PR. Mm. So they come up with this uh, 177 uh, 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 million. But a few weeks ago, it was all mess. And I can, I can say to you now, mm. till today, there's a mess at the port because of the, what, what they are deployed. So the report in the final newspaper, page four, talks about the benefits of ICOMS. It says it is a comprehensive clearance system that does not only work to facilitate trade, but ensures that every PESWA is collected and compliant and risk-free passengers are giving special processing. The system also works to ensure national security and safety. That is what ICOMS brings to us. So, so how, how, how come they are paying 14 CDs? Which, which even if you import a bicycle, will you, will you pay 14 CDs for a bicycle to clear a bicycle? So where, where from? Of course, I'm saying that the new operators mm. have got a fat budget for public relations. They, they will say that. But TV3, send your cameras to the port this morning. You will mm. see the problem, the frustration people are having. They are having to use manual systems to do certain things. And simply because they failed so far to take over because the platform belongs to GCNet and mm. government. Now they are compelled to do something to bring some good news. Mm. Oh, that we've, we've done this. Is it only 177 we are supposed to get? And guess what? You heard them saying that this is not all the money we've got. Right. That the, the previous operator also collected some of the money on our, uh, uh, on, on our behalf. Uh, in, in, in two weeks, we are supposed to get the full amount. That's what... The, the, yeah, the yeah. But so the previous operator, which means that the previous operator was capable of collecting the money. Mm. So what is this one supposed to be, uh, to be doing? And there's also a, que a question as to whether GCNet has a valid agreement till today. Don't be surprised to see the state pay money in terms of damages for... Uh, inappropriate termination of contract. M Mr. Safamafo says that their contract has expired, and GCNet is also threatening that you would get, you have to pay me three hundred million dollars. Uh, yes. Uh, if you fail to do that, but they are in court. I, I actually, that, that, with, so, with that, Unipass. That, that, there you go. So, plagiarism. Exactly. But so, the minister, the senior minister, insists that look, your contract has expired. You know, well, I mean, the, the least said about what the senior minister said, uh, the, uh, the better. If, if no, you have no, a contract, no, 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 don't you? No, no, no. Won't you? Won't you have? Uh, won't, don't you know the details? We know the contract expires next year or something like that. Mm. If you say you don't have a contract, based on what? When did the contract expire? Can, did the, 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 the minister... Well, I'm happy he's decided to put his neck on it, that mm. this transition or this hostile takeover mm. is a baby of 
uh, how do you call it, uh, Osafo Mafo, I'm happy he's decided to take ownership of it. Mm. Let's see what happens in the future. Eric, I'll ask you the same question. We're in difficult times. Uh, the port is a single uh, source of huge revenue for the state. Now we're not getting money from many different places. The key question is, what is wrong or what was wrong with GCNet, which is why we had to swap them for Unipass, ICOMS, or whatever it is. What was wrong with it? Well, uh, thank you very much. You know, uh, because my friend here is agitated, he's forgotten to even wear his mask properly. He should relax. <laughs> and, you know, it's, uh, and you see, it's very true. And you, I think that you have an appreciation of the processes mm -hmm. that this is taking. Uh, in 2017, the process of um, securing a single window system for mm. our ports actually started mm. with extensive uh, stakeholder consultation uh, regarding making sure that we have a more efficient system. Mm. What we have is an end-to-end -end single window system. Mm. You know, here too, we're using GCNet and West Blue, West Blue mm. which had operational challenges and inefficiencies. But GCNet insists they, have, but, they, but have, they see, have they will an end-to-end. -end. Listen, they will say that. I'm just, because okay. it's, we're talking about a single window. Okay. Right? So that is the, the difference, which mm. is an end-to-end -end process, where, which means that you do not have to move from one vendor to the other, mm. but it goes through one process, mm. right? And the idea really is to allow us for more efficiency mm. and for government to be able to track everything that goes through our post, mm. which means that it gives you a proper secure audit trail, right? And then also even relatively cheaper in terms of the operations of it. Government does not own or did not own GCNet mm. and West Blue mm. in terms of the systems. In the, under this particular arrangement, government will have the benefit of keeping all the revenue mm. after this PPP arrangement mm. with a 100% wholly owned Ghanaian company. You know, mm. apart from that, you are talking about even security, cross-border movement of persons, wholesome goods to facilitate trade and make it a bit easier. Mm. On the backdrop of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement that mm. we have signed, mm. which you know that Ghana is going to be the host. The yeah. host, right? So we're creating a system where, when you start talking about trade facilitation and ease of doing business mm. and all of those things, this feeds rightly into it. I mean, with my background, and you know that in trying to deploy these systems, mm -hmm. you're always going to have some challenges and hitches along the way, okay. right? It can never be the case that the various stakeholders who are now expressing some level of disquiet mm. had not been consulted along the way, <laughs> right? As we speak, the uh, ICUMS system, which is a Unipass mm. system, is been deployed across all the various What is wrong with GCNet? Or what was wrong it with GCNet? It is not about what is, you see, you've <laughs> asked the question, I've, exp I've told you. I, I, right. I, I hear you. I'm, <laughs> I'm, saying that, I'm saying that it is it is a process, it is a it's a decision mm. that was taken as far back as 2017 okay. to ensure efficiency at our ports, mm. to ensure there's a proper accurate audit trail, mm. to ensure that revenue mobilization increases. Mm. Now, as a result of the existing or systemic operational challenges between mm. GCNet and mm. Unipass, mm. right? Now, if it's a, it's a conversation about going into the technicalities of why mm. the need for a single mm. window, I think it's a very, it's a no-brainer. It's a clear case for okay. that. So that the processes in ensuring that government knows exactly what has come into the system, mm. issues to do with security, mm. issues to do with revenue mobilization, mm. and all that, creating a proper audit trail was necessary at a point. Because okay. we have to move on from one okay. process so, to the other. So at a point when we all agree mm -hmm. that trade facilitation and making sure that the ease of doing business becomes paramount to okay. our development. Eric, we have agreed see, on that. In, in, 19, so in 1999... Can, we, no, Eric, let me make... Because you on. see, when you were speaking, no, you didn't no, no, ask him too no, many questions. No, no, I'm, Otherwise, you, you, I, I you always, disrupt my I always say that. You always do that to be, me. Because when I, when I asked you, I asked you a question about yes. what was wrong with GCNet. You, you have not answered that. But I'm saying that, look... No, it is not about... It is not about... You see, when that is a very, as far as I'm concerned... Uh, not necessarily an unfair question, but it's a question that does not fit this particular conversation. How does it the, fit? The reason is very simple. Mm. A decision had been made. It's almost B based like, on what? It's, it's based almost, on it, what? I can give you a, a typical example. Mm. Like it's almost as if that you have an analog system here at TV3, mm. right? Mm. Which probably had worked perfectly. But you decide that in this day and age, with all these digital but, migration... But GCNet is not analog. They, but it, I am just using an example. But I'm GCNet saying that is not analog. Unipass is a single 
window system, mm. which is an end-to-end -end process. As far as I'm concerned, GCNet doesn't do that. GCNet mm. was doing that in tandem with West Blue, which means that we're using two separate vendors. Okay, so, right? so and that my, a decision my, had been taken. My, my appreciation. A decision had been taken. So, Eric, let me as far back as 2017, mm. Mm. and extensive stakeholder consultations had been done. Mm. Some piloting had been done, mm. right? But you see, I, I, I do not want to say that the the challenges mm -hmm. or the, the the things that some of the freight forwarders have complained about mm. do not exist. But that's what you get with almost the implementation or the deployment of every system, mm. right? And I'm saying that that does not mean that it will negate the efficiencies, mm. the, 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 the benefits, the revenue mobilization, mm. the improved security that this system will bring us. Mm. Plus, in any case, we do not even own the GCNet and West Blue platforms. Right. So you have thirty five. No, no, no. Shares. But when I say own, yeah, we didn't. Then, the they, system. And, I'm and talking were, about. I'm you... talking about the systems, right. right? We did not own them. the software. Yes. And which, so government, which they are in court with ICOM. Yes. Over. The government, mm. after the expiration of this uh, PPP arrangement with the hundred percent mm. owned Ghanaian company, would own the system. That in itself gives us a certain control over a certain database mm. and all that, and can be used for. Proper planning. So, so as why, why is GCNet in court so with ICOM? It doesn't matter. No, Be because in, because in GCNet says that Unipass is plagiarizing on a system, which is why we are back to the paper system we have at the port. We do now. not. We are not back to the paper system. Mm. We are not back to the system. So you see, when he made an example of uh, a car that has been brought into a country and mm. people are paying fourteen, 14 cities, right? you know, it, I mean, I'm, I don't sit here and uh, pretend that I have clarity over the issues. But that can be one of those aberrations that that system will. But how can the government, like the minister mm. just rightly said, rake in just this amount of revenue in just the last few mm. weeks using this particular system? So all I'm saying is that it does not matter if GCNet decides to go to court mm. to seek certain redresses that it feels that is allowed or is they the benefit of. Mm. But I'm saying that that is the essence of democracy. Mm. If they feel that there's something untold that has happened, by all means, let's go out, let them go ahead and do that. But that does not mm. stop government mm. from making a decision that would, as far as I'm concerned, be of more benefit to the entire population okay. of let this me, country. Let me ask you, let me ask me. you this question. I know that the whole GCNet idea was mooted by former President Rawlings, mm -hmm. endorsed by former President Kufo, implemented. Mm -hmm. Along the line, uh, President Mills came, he carried on with it. Then President Mahama came, that was when West Blues was, was introduced. Mm -hmm. So they had a collaboration. Mm -hmm. And it's been working fine since that time. That is, what is, that is what you think. Okay, that's, that is what the facts are. No, no, but that now, is what... But now, that, yes. now, question the freight forwarders are asking, for example, that GCNet is ISO certified. Mm -hmm. Unipass, in terms of experience, quality, competence, does not have what GCNet has. Nope. Do you change... A team that has gathered experience over time is ISO certified, is proven to give you a lot of revenue rating. Do you swap that for a new baby that is yet to learn the ropes? No, but at what point would you ever uh, engineer any mm. kind of change? Right? And I'm saying that the decisions to actually uh, activate a new system was, mm. taken, was not taken in 2020, it okay. was taken in 2017, okay. which means that. A certain level of audit would have been done. Mm. Some evaluation have been done of the existing system, which was IE, GCNet, mm. and West Blue. And a decision had been made that for us to be able to move forward from here, okay. we need an end-to-end -end system, mm. a single window, a, 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 I mean a true single window system okay. to allow for all the benefits that I have spoken about. Mm. You understand? So you can nitpick, you can go down and create all sort of... Um, uh, questions and mm. all that, but it doesn't mean that the decision to go ahead and create a new system okay. that will be of benefit to everybody is a bad decision. Yeah, okay, I, I have a small question for my yes, brother. Yes, uh, one minute. You, each uh, you said uh, when I talked about the ninety-two million dollars, mm -hmm. if they terminate within a year, right? What informed that? Since the whole thing is ours now, and I can tell you for a fact, mm. the integration of uh, uh, GCN at West Blue mm. is much more vast. They had one, uh, the, the one over one thousand declarants. 
a, a 137 shipping uh, uh, line. Mm. In fact, their integration has got more, it's not only about the port. Mm. MDAs, banks, insurance companies. And I'm saying that if you have this, which is not costing you any money, if I own 35%, mm. why do you bring on board a new operator? Mm. And by the way, this is the same government that is asking for foreign investment. Mm. There's a foreign partner who owns 75% of this. And you are getting rid of uh, in fact, uh, 20, uh, 65%. Mm. You are getting rid of them and you are bold to be saying that you are getting rid of them so that you have a, a wholly a Ghanaian owned entity. Mm. That, is that not just like, uh, I mean, a, a contradiction? And the question I ask is, mm. what informs the decision of government mm. to write a contract and say, we'll pay this Nigeria. entity $92.7 million mm. if the contract is terminated within a year? Okay. No, I'm asking him. They, they, they are you, you want to take the question? Easy lesson. Um, I, I marvel at some of the logic of the NDC. Mm. You know, you go into a contract with an entity. Mm. Uh, they're going to um, invest some money, systems, mm. time, resources into a process, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Now, to give them that level of comfort, you would um, basically integrate a system where if mm. for one reason or the other that particular contract is breached, Right, mm. they would get some uh, relief. So I don't see anything wrong with that. This mm. whole idea of 19 million and that is, is, it means that uh, there's something untoward mm. in there. It's neither here nor there because this is a is system. It not? This is a, yeah, because uh, if I'm correct, this Unipass mm. uh, thing actually came to Parliament, isn't it? Did it come to Parliament? I'm not aware. Right. But I mean, I'll double check make that. Sense, does it make sense to you that, that you was, have, you have, a system mm -hmm. that's working perfectly. You own 35% of it. No, but now they understand. You're, you're, you're focusing well, too on. much on. Well, I'm focusing this on thing. it because, because I'm Ghanaian. Yeah, because yeah, I'm Ghanaian. Yeah, and I know, you know how much comes through the post. Look, but Eric, I am saying to you that every, the, every, the, the, every, the, the, the CD, every CD that GCNet yes, generated yes. was given us 40%. What about hold what on, about on, the on, revenues, on, the increment on, on revenues on, that on. the Unipass would bring? Hold on, is that what you are thinking? Hold so you are thinking so, about so I'm thinking you are thinking about GC Eric, as an entity, I have, but you are not thinking about the entire. And Eric, that is a very Eric, misplaced I have, uh, I have priority. A company, I have a company with I'm you. I'm saying that. I I'm also you. asking you. Am I, are I, you I thinking about GC Net as an entity or Ghana as a corporate body? Can I finish my that as an entity as a Ghana as a corporate body would be able to garner more revenue from a, an end-to-end end process but as to, can, can as to, there's no evidence as to GCNet as an I'm not, can, I have can nothing I, against I, GCNet. Can I, can I, can I, can I this process <laughs> started three years ago. You're not allowing me to finish No, and so, but you're focusing so on a certain aspect of the conversation, now, I'm, which as far as I'm concerned is the most trivial aspect of it. I'm asking you, does it make sense to you that you and I have a company? Yes. I own 35% of yes. that company. Mm -hmm. Now, beyond that, every CD you make, I get 40 pesos yes. of it. Yes. Now, this new company you are bringing, I don't have shares. Yes. It has, and when, it you has make, when you make a, a, a CD, yes. I get nothing from it. But that, it, is not, it is not gov in government's interest to be making money off GCNet. It's in government's interest to be making money, revenues from the port. Using a more efficient system, an end-to-end okay. -end single There's window no system. system. I can't be better than, than no. the yeah. But that is what I'm saying. That. No. No, but um, no, listen, uh, listen, listen, yes. listen. That's what I'm saying. That. You see, so when we have these conversations, mm. you see, we shouldn't pretend that we are on the only I mean, uh, people who have sense in our heads, mm. right? Because even within the use, uh, Unipass mm. system mm. and the people, the folks at the ministry and the various stakeholders that have come together to put this thing, these are experts. These mm. are people who are professionals. Okay. A lot of, no, no, no. Yeah, forget about those things, right? And I'm saying that. This, forget about this. No, <laughs> what I'm saying is forget about those little, little things that you're talking about. What I'm saying is that you go through a process. Mm. You arrive at a vendor that is going to provide the nation with no with, track record. With an end-to-end -end process. No track record. Okay. Come that on. is meant to what? Uh, <laughs> ma make sure that we have more revenue. Mm. We have security, we have clarity of what is coming. All in. of which we'll be able to. Do. But I do not know that. And the people who have come in with the but system. But the free foreigners are saying, yeah, but they we don't like say, the system. They, they can, because yeah, it is not good. They can say that. 
I have no challenge with the faithful way saying that. Mm. But the whole essence of governance, mm. or leadership for that matter, is to take hard decisions. But they raise, look, they they raise questions. They have when, raised when questions. They, so when, what would you say? When the pilot started what, in would you, Tata, what, would you, what would you say? Mm. What would you say? A year down the line, two years down the line, and we do an extrapolation of how we had made with GCNet. Mm. And it turns out that because of a single window system, and having an end-to-end -end system, and having a view, clarity mm. on mm. this particular, we are actually you, you, making you are, it more revenue. anticipating. No, but that is in the reverse. No, no, what but is that is, that is, okay, that is, that is, that is why. You're in hand. You no, have, but then if you do that. You have you, money in your hand. Per that logic. Let me drop the money. Johnny, Johnny, per that logic, per that logic. It's dumping your wife for a new girlfriend, isn't it? Per that logic, it means that you will not, you will not encourage or entertain any new change or development. That's why I use the old system. The, because it is faulty and it was inefficient. Okay. No. And it had evidence. Professional challenges. Wait, wait. Now, when, the, when the people, when the people, but was, it not the when the people was it not the government that told GCNet to go and get a, an end listen, to end system uh, listen, in place? I'm saying to you that. And they did a software But if you give, if you give me an opportunity, hmm. if you give me an opportunity, I'll, I'll, I'll simplify this. Okay. You have a system, hmm. right? Government has an audit and indicates that even with the GCNet and West Blue, system combined when you have two vendors, mm. right? We had operational challenges. We had revenue leakages, mm. right? And the way to go about it is to ensure that we have a single window system where it goes through one system. We'll be able to audit the trail. We would have proper clarity in terms of security mm. because even now as we speak, the sub-region itself is a very dangerous place in terms of security. Okay. And you know that you have an appreciation of that. Right. So this system goes beyond even just the reckoning of revenue, mm. but has clarity on what we are bringing in wholesome goods, okay. persons, does and all, all that, that and more. And then let, let's, we bring, let's bring it. Let's have now. more revenue. Let's, to go let's with bring it. Well. Now, that's, don't keep the lady with you. Now, welcome back. Thank <laughs> you, Johnny. A few messages this morning. Good morning, Johnny. It's sad to know that the MP of uh, Gushegu constituency, Dr. Ziblim Idi, has stepped down from the primaries to be re-elected as a candidate for the constituency. All is not well in our party going into uh, 2020 polls for us, Gushegu Razak. Uh, it says. Uh, uh, Farouk Tamale North uh, says that, good morning. It is surprising those who called uh, themselves patriots uh, are now discriminating others not to exercise their political ambitions. The disqualification of the MPP's potential candidates by their leadership is unacceptable and strained to our democracy. Walanyo Inakwitiya says, interestingly, the date for the primaries, both presidential and parliamentary is out. It is my fervent wish that we, the delegates, will do what's necessary to choose the competent candidate to lead us. My best choice for Kutia constituency is NS Yaokumi. Good morning, Johnny. My regards to Honorable Agboja, my main man. Bra Eric, though I don't ascribe to your political grouping, I would love to see you among the legislators. The good Lord will grant you that. You are a gentleman of good intellect, vibrant, jovial, well composed. Keep it up. Rex from Volta. Good morning, Johnny. Good morning, Johnny and Etonam, my crush. Please, if the NDC man believes that the constitution must uphold in clean and fair manner, then it means they respect the law and constitutional bodies, so they should please allow EC to do their work. Epiphras from Dansuman. The political party that always chanted the battle is the Lord's uh, slaughtering animals left and right, invoking demons to punish the wicked just for simple parliamentary primaries. God is watching. Chris from Ashaliboche. Good morning, TV3 New Day. Johnny, remind the NDC man that when someone wanted to pick a form to contest GM, they denied him and called him a madman. Mm -hmm. Matthias Bukari from Tempani. Good morning, Johnny. In fact, the issue of denying potential candidates for political aspirations is not the best uh, practice, but the fact is it's not only MPP that is found in this unfortunate style of selection, but NDC as well. In 2016, how many people contested ex-president John Dramani Mahama for the presidential race? It must be condemned without political lenses. Al Hassan sends that from Tamale. I'll take the very last one. Good morning, TV3. Why is NDC always doing propaganda on all issues concerning everything in the country? It's high time they use platforms like TV3 to tell Ghanaians what they will do and stop the blame game. Abdulaziz Nindo uh, Katochi from Tema. Thank you. Thank you very much. Kwame, uh, uh, Ernesto Yeboa was arrested uh, some, some time of the weekend for holding a vigil for uh, George Floyd, um, a situation that 
many think it's not fair, especially when the Ghana Tourism Authority and the ministry had themselves held a, a, you know, a, a memorial service in honor of uh, the fallen brother. Um, I can't breathe and, and all of that. And well, they, the conversation we're having is that you flouted the Public Order Act. They insist that they informed the police and they thought that if the police disagreed, they should have sought for an injunction to, to stop them. However, you know, we saw the brutality that was meted out to them. And they say it's ironical that we are campaigning against brutality, against blacks elsewhere, but in our own land, that brutality exists. Uh, what do you say? One minute, one minute maybe, and then we'll wrap up. Well, on uh, first of all, I believe uh, you journalists are the best to evaluate uh, since uh, we started this uh, phase of uh, a democracy, mm. which government have been most intolerant? Uh, I believe uh, it's not last week it was uh, Adoma mm. who was picked up for predicting. We all know the president never did any live uh, update on COVID. Mm -hmm. He does a recording, go and sleep, and then they, they play it sometime. How, 10, how do you know he goes to sleep? Well, I mean, I, I mean, uh, it's an elderly person, 10 o'clock, what is he doing? I mean, otherwise, he would have done the, 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 the live uh, coverage. Mm. Because he couldn't do that, maybe uh, he, he, he needed to do a recording. So we all were predicting. Mm. We all know he would come and say, Pharaoh Ghanaian. So you know that story. <laughs> and then we all predict this thing. So I don't know why he only uh, did that. But the, the most important thing is this. Mm. I find it quite hypocritical for the state to even attempt to organize a vigil mm. for Floyd, uh, Mr. Floyd, yeah. may he so rest in peace. Amen. When Ahmed Swali was helping this state do the right thing and was murdered and fingers are pointed at some people mm. and we are not able to do anything about it i don't even know what the president said about that but we spent state money to do that and if somebody also goes to do that of course you can say that he flouted the public order mm. and i'm not the one who is coming to support him that go and breach any part of our constitution mm. i would i wouldn't do that mm. but who caused him it was the, the determination of this government to see that as something that should be done, that uh, encourage them to do it. Mm. But all in all, mm. you could tell that this government's intolerance is beyond what anybody can tolerate. No journalist can speak. Believe me, if you like, say anything here boldly mm. that the president doesn't like. Somebody will find a way of getting at you. Yeah, and it's created exactly. a situation. Says a lot of things. It's, it's created a situation <laughs> where a majority listen, of journalists. Listen, in this, you give him one minute. Majority oh, of the journalists some in minute. this country, you, you maybe some of them, the same amount even of if they have something to say, they are afraid of saying it because you may be pinned down or you somebody will stand on your neck. And and I don't think it's good for our democracy. This is a president who have done demonstration upon demonstration, has spoken his mind, and today, just because he's president, everybody should be sing his, his song. And I think it's a tragedy for. A journalist, I, I want to take the opportunity to sympathize with all of you who are in the Inky fraternity. You are really under threat, and the only way you can get this knee mm. off your neck is to reject this government mm. on the 7th of December, and you can have your freedom. Okay, Eric. You see, for me, um you said Ernesto de Erba was uh, arrested by the police. Yes, right? uh, there was a joint police and military uh, thing. They fired shots. Um, we saw one And then of you, the, you use the word brutality. Yes, somebody was yes, injured. Some, somebody was, yes, somebody was pushed off the motorbike. There was a white lady there who was saying, this is not fair. This is not okay, fair. Okay, so you see, Johnny, mm. you see, when we, you see, you have a very big platform, mm. you know. So sometimes you have probably That's uh, what I'm a, asking a you bigger, the thing responsibility than someone like me because okay. I represent a political party. Mm. You see, so when you create the impression that uh, some brutalities have been meted out mm. to some people who have been arrested. It is the people I think who that, felt it who are saying yes, they were but, but, so, but don't say how, that for how, a fact. How you do see? I say that no, no, they were not brutalized? No, no, no. I wasn't there. Yeah, but then, so you have to check. That is your job. But the video that I no, saw, no, but you see, saw, this, saw but listen, that man put somebody off the And mark. that, you come to a conclusion that brutality were meted out. If I push you out. off your chair, is no, that not brutal? No, you see, you see, you see, it's very, you know, you're my brother. Let's not do this. I'm your brother too. Let's do this in a very You don't like the word brutality? No, because I haven't seen it. Video. Okay, but, I have seen and the you video. have you. I mean, you have seen a video. It's all over now, social media. For me, and you know you me. See, even and I also you, and know me. Allah, Allah, Allah. And you know me. If any form of brutality has been meted out to anybody mm. in this current democratic dispensation, mm. it's wrong. Some investigation should be done. Mm. Do we want to stick by the tenets of our democracy, which mm. is our constitution, or not? Yes. Now it goes without saying that mm. if you want to engage in any public um, 
event or you want to do any gathering of that sort, mm -hmm. even especially in this era of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, mm -hmm. right? You need to be minded by some of these protocols mm -hmm. and get proper uh, clearance from the police before you can go ahead and mm -hmm. do that. We mm -hmm. have this conversation all the time. Mm -hmm. So to say that uh, you were waiting for the police to say that they had an issue with that and they go to court to mm -hmm. seek an That's injection. what they are saying. Yes, but that is, but you, you see, you propagated it as if that that is what you also you see, believe in. You see, they you know, also, and when they Eric, say Eric, that, Eric, Eric, it is wrong Eric, because Eric, we are serving Eric, as Eric, don't put a platform Eric, don't put for educating people. Eric, don't put this on me. I'm not. I'm, I'm only stating yes. the facts in the long letter, three page facts letter that I from saw. Who? Relax. Three from page who? letter that I saw them write and what but I've seen. Did on you speak media. to the that videos? Now, they have even quoted. But the have you spoken? They have also quoted a portion of the Ghana Law Report and the case that had been Listen, but have you had time to speak to the police, Eric? Eric, take your time. Did you speak to the police? Eric, take your no. time. You Eric, didn't. Eric, take your time. Papa, no, no, I always no, 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 speak no, to the police. They said they didn't see you. This is my job. Me, I do this better. Uh -huh. Slow down. Yes. I'm oh. saying that. And uh -huh. Esther and his team mm -hmm. had written a three page letter. Mm -hmm. And they insist that they had written to the police, mm -hmm. to the IGP through the regional mm -hmm. commander. And they have said that, look, per portions of the Ghana law report, a mm -hmm. judgment that had been passed in the Supreme Court. Or you don't so. need here. You just need to write to inform, inform them. Yes. You don't need to. And the to police, wait for approval. And and the police would have to seek an injunction from to stop the court. Him. Is that what that's, that? That's, that's, that's but what I am is. saying that. Mm. You see, in all of these things, right? We are trying to build a democracy, right. right? Right. And I would not be someone who will countenance any form of uh, uh, brutality on anybody. Mm. I'm saying that for us to have a very, a very fair conversation. Mm. Maybe somebody from your outfit should mm. have spoken to the police to get their side. Shouldn't the police be speaking themselves? Why no, but then, so the you are, so, you know, yeah, but so, so you should have, you should have <laughs> taken your time, right? Because I didn't see it. And mm. if somebody was brutalized, that is shameful. It shouldn't be done. Okay. Right. But for you so, to so attribute so that, that, so you have not for, seen for, it, for, there's, there's no point, for you, for you there's no point in for you to attribute that and allow my friend here to view uh, off you have, and you have start. Not seen it. Yeah, no, 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 He hasn't seen anything. Okay. Is We've seen that. Yeah, so was a member of parliament. I member of parliament for the Adaklu constituency around here. We call him Adaklu. We hope to see him back in parliament again. And Eric Chum is a member of the MPP's communication team. He is also in the race to win the Fantiaqua South seat. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time.